Okay, today I have two cases for you of a 38-year-old male, a 38-year-old gentleman who cannot breathe and is having some chest pressure. But there's two different emergencies going on here. I do these cases so you can understand hallmark signs and symptoms. If you understand the signs and symptoms of all the medical and traumatic emergencies, you are going to pass on our EMT. So here we go. You respond to a 38-year-old male with chest pressure. He says he can't sleep as the pain is unbearable. He's been more tired recently, and you find he has a fever. What are you thinking about? What do you suspect? Now, let's start by underlining a few things. We have a 38-year-old male with some chest pain, chest pressure, okay? He can't sleep. So when this question says he can't sleep, we're thinking, well, he can't lay flat. So what starts to go on in our head if he can't lay flat? Is there, is there fluid in his lungs? Is there pressure on his heart that's caused an issue? These are certainly possibilities. And the pain is unbearable. Okay, unbear okay. And, the, and not the breathing, the pain is unbearable. Okay. So it sounds like reading this case, it's more the pain in his chest more than really the breathing. Okay. He's been more tired and recently had a fever. These are the hallmark sign symptoms of pericarditis. So remember this, folks. Anything that ends in itis is an inflammation or infection. Infection, infection, fever of whatever we're talking about. Pericarditis. Here is a test you can do in the ambulance. Someone comes in your ambulance. They got chest pain. Ask them, does it hurt more when you lay back, when you lay down? Now, I'm not telling you to lay someone down who can't breathe, but you can ask them that question and see if you get a response. Oh, yeah, it's on. Oh, I'm breathing. It's way worse. Or, ah, oh, pain's unbearable. When you sit them up and they go, oh, I feel a lot better. That is pericarditis. Sitting them up makes them feel better. Now, a lot of conditions can have that effect. If I have fluid in my lungs, you just sit me up, I feel better too. But it's something to note in your chart and something to notice in your patient. What catches me here is the fever with the pain being unbearable and then being more tired and in the age of the patient, pericarditis. Now, what would you do here out in the field for this patient? to really clue it in, you would do an EKG. And on the EKG, you would see ST elevation. If it really was pericarditis, you would see ST elevation widespread, not reciprocal changes, not too up and too down. You would see widespread elevation and it just wouldn't make any sense. It'd be wide, there'd be elevation everywhere. That's pericarditis. Now, here we have a different case, same patient. You respond to a hit and run MVA where your patient is a 38 year old male. Okay. So hit and run MVA. Okay. So just thinking about it first, a hit and run MVA. Well, if I tap someone's bumper, right? The usually hit and runs are when there's a major accident and the person goes, Whoa, that was crazy. Let me get out of here. Right. That is usually what we see in a hit and run, right? where your patient is a 38-year-old male. He says his chest hurts, chest pain, and can only speak in one or two words per sentence. Okay, so that's concerning. Trauma, one or two word sentences, chest pain. What's starting to flicker in your mind? What do you want, what do you want to have? I want lung sounds. Oh, I got lung sounds. I get diminished lung sounds on the left side, and I get JVD. So I have a one side of the chest diminished lung sounds. I have JVD. What's the big key here? Listen, and this is so key. If your patient has JVD in their neck and you see it, this means the heart is failing as a pump. There are several reasons why the heart can fail as a pump. The heart can be squeezed, 
right? For example, let's say there's fluid around the heart so it can't contract, like, for example, like a tamponade, right? That, right? What else? Well, if I have a pneumothorax and I have pressure from the actual injury and I have a pneumothorax and pressure is moving and shifting things in my chest or my heart now can't pump like it used to because the air and the pressure in the chest causes JVD. Tension pneumothorax is going on in this case here, right? Now, how do we define a pneumothorax or the tension pneumothorax? The presence of hypotension, which I didn't put on here, but just so you're aware, that's it. So you go to someone, they have absent or diminished lung sounds on one side, chest pain, they can't breathe very well, like one or two word senses, or they're, you know, they're struggling to breathe. They have JVD. A late sign is a trachea deviation, a trachea movement. Everything show if I let's just say for example, I have a bullet come in through here. A bullet comes through here, the pressure moves this way, right? As a lung the lung is collapsing, it's happening. So the air builds up around that lung and there's a press, press, press on the heart. Whether it's coming from this way or coming from this way, the JVD is caused and the heart fails at the pump. And as a bonus, remember this folks. If this patient has hypotension, JVD, and a lung sounds, and they're in tension, tension pneumothorax, where are they going to end up? In, if, if you do nothing, they're going to end up in shock. What type of shock is this? It's obstructive shock. Because it's not the heart's fault that we're in shock with tension pneumothorax. It's obstructive because blood flow is obstructed by the pneumothorax and that pressure pressing on the heart. It's obstructive shock. Now, a lot of you asked in the comments about how to prepare for school, how to get through school, and how to pass NREMT. The first link in the description is a study tool that I give to all my students to accomplish all of that. It's called the Video Vault. Inside the video vault is over 480 videos of content, audio files, worksheets, practice quizzes, our community group. What I do in the video vault is take all the concepts you need to know to pass school at NREMT and I break them down simply for you. So that way you just follow along with the videos, you follow the study plan and you pass. I give my students lifetime access in the first link in the description, and I'll see you on the inside.